Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Aries March 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant and it's a great pleasure to meet you, great pleasure to meet the subscribers in particular. Now the subscribers know that many of you subscribers have had one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings with me recently and uh, you have enjoyed the experience. It's been great to get to know you and if you might be interested to find out what's involved in a clairvoyant reading with me then just check out the information below. Now speaking of experience there are no advertisements during the course of this content so you get to enjoy the experience uninterrupted. Now I charge for the clairvoyant readings but there's something that I want to uh, announce uh, for the YouTube audience now and it is this. Look, for many, many years in my home country, I have conducted healing of people. It's spiritual healing. It's healing of physical ailments. Now, I'm not a doctor, and I suggest that people should also, at the same time, obtain medical advice. In fact, I think you have to, by law, say that. So I'm saying that now in case in any jurisdiction where this happens to be seen, people say, some government official says, oh, you can't say that. Well, all I know is that it generally works. Well, I don't know any situation where the end result has been bad at all. In fact, people have been delighted. Now, the thing that I will say to you is, and why I do charge for clairvoyant readings is, I'm offering the, uh, as I do, I offer the healing for free. And I now offer it to you or people you might know over FaceTime or Skype if they have something that needs to be dealt with. And I can't do just phone. I need to be able to see the person. So that's there. Now there's no... It is absolutely free. I don't recommend any products or services. I don't ask that you have a reading or that you consider having a reading at some stage. You never have had to have had one, you don't have to have one, and you never have to see one if you don't want to. This is a completely separate thing. It is something which, basically, I have been told to do, if that makes sense. It's a spiritual gift, and you have the, the instinct, the inclination, the inspiration as to what you need to do, and it comes from the absolute. So that's there. Find out more about it in the description below and find out about the clairvoyant readings in the description below. But as I say, there's absolutely no obligation with the healing and it takes about 15 minutes or less, but I need to be able to see the person. So FaceTime or Skype. Now let's get five cards for you because that's all we need. And then we'll get things underway for your reading. There is the fool. Here is... The moon, a couple of major arcana off the straight up front there. There's the star, three major arcana. Ten of wands. And finally, what do we have? The king of pentacles, right. Well, why don't you come sit down here next to me? We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do the reading for you. All right, all right, my friend, let's deal first with this card of the Fool, which has made its way here and is, of course, the first one that you drew. Now, let's have a look at the imagery on it and see what there is to say here. Well, the Fool, well, its name suggests that it is associated with foolish action, doesn't it? Yet its, present here, its presence here in the Major Arcana and its imagery says otherwise. This foolishness, as it were, kind of manifests as a divine foolishness, a sacred drunkenness, a mad ecstasy. This unity with Godhead is also a form of self-annihilation in which the boundaries between I and not I are destroyed, leaving only the divine. Now this in itself becomes its own form of spiritual madness as the mystic acts contrary to social convention, seemingly crazy to those who don't understand. Now this, it, it's interesting, you know, because the Islamic Mevlevi group or order, if you like, of Sufi mysticism 
performs a practice that is aimed at achieving this state of divine annihilation, the Sama ceremony. Now, initiation into the Sufi path means the surrender of will, the transformation of desire from self-centeredness to God-centeredness a seeking not so much to escape from the self as to transcend or change self and thus enter into a timeless experience. Now the whirling dance of Sama has caused followers of this order to be known as whirling dervishes. I'm sure you've heard of them. A dervish is another term for an initiate of the Sufi path, though they are properly called Tuss a wolf, I think, uh, from memory. The whirling is a form of remembrance of Allah, God, which can bring about an altered state of ecstasy. Like the fool, although the dance may look chaotic and physically exciting, it is actually a symptom of an ascent of the soul towards unity with the divine. The outward chaos conceals the inner peace. I think what you have here at this time is an openness about you, a trust, a ready to take a risk, and certainly the courage to stand your ground. Freedom, independence, creativity, and great potential, and the possibility to take something of a quantum leap, and you'll be listening to your heart's voice. And I suggest that you might, which is something which is unusual for you, I suppose, you will be in the present. There's a new beginning associated with this energy here, and certainly acting without malice. You are open, I think, too, eh? and ready for a new beginning, perhaps, as I say, even a, a great quantum leap. So give in, dare to leap, even if fear attempts to hold you back. Trust the voice within your heart. Now, fear can sometimes be seen as a tiger, I suppose. So what is the tiger of fear for you? How do you imagine the courageous leap into the new? What does it look like? Where does your heart call you to go? Say this to yourself at this time. I now follow my heart. I am open and ready to go wherever it may lead me. I am a radiant being. I am a living treasure. I honor and value the unlimited resource of courage which is within me. I respect the nature of whom I am and there is nothing to fear. Let's have a look at this Ten of Wands, which is underneath it. And this is Saturn in Sagittarius in this position here. Saturn is cold and dense, and Sagittarius wants to expand and live life to the full. So there's something here which is something of a heavy energy around here an oppressive energy that's around here now in this image we can see a man dragging the capstone that's the top stone of a pyramid up to its final resting place it is important that it is the capstone that he has taken on as his burden for this is the final piece of the pyramid to be put in place. His work is almost done. The sun sets overhead and the torches around him have been lit. Even as the light fades, his will still burns strongly, urging him onwards. He screams in agony and expended effort as his muscles strain against the ropes of his burden, it is clear that this task is taking every ounce of strength that he has, every piece of his will and self. And he wears a simple loincloth inspired by images from ancient Egypt of builders at work. 
Now, it's got to be said that when given that astrological influence that's there of Saturn in Sagittarius, it might well be that because this has come here, you might be feeling overwhelmed, stressed and challenged with the burdens of life, the heavy weight of responsibilities, endless tasks and commitments bring the realization that you've taken on more than you can handle. You do give so much of yourself to other people, don't you? And as you struggle to advance, you feel like you are taking one step forward and two steps back. Feeling overextended, your, your energy is being depleted as the demands of life await your attention. Now, this Ten of Wands, I think, indicates a state of uh, what I might call, may not be the right word, but the feeling I get is that of oppression, challenging you to transcend your present situation. But the fool is also saying that there is an opportunity for you now to transcend yourself, but also now to transcend your circumstances that are around them. The, the key here is to recognize oppressive and non-productive habits and patterns, shifting them and transforming them into new insights and empowerment. The gift of this Ten of Wands is breaking karmic blocks, reclaiming and balancing your life force and expanding it into a world of action. I think that the lesson of this 10 is to recognize and address your outgrown karmic patterns. It can bring the heavy burdens of life, <coughs> excuse me, but it can also bring the opportunity to connect with your soul self, finding your life's true path to freedom and liberation. Remember, you are the driver of your physical vehicle. What happens to you on this earth plane is always unpredictable. But if you keep to your center, your heart, mind and spirit, keep them in alignment and balanced with your daily activities, you will navigate through any challenge successfully. Listen to your core. Now, the suit of one's fiery masculine energy needs to be contained and balanced to express itself in a productive fashion. Now, the number 10, as you probably know, represents completion and new beginnings. The 10 of one's mission is to stop the sabotaging and defeating patterns to transform your shadow aspect and empower you to the next stage of your growth. Now, where might we go next? Let's have a look at, where might we do? We might, uh... hello, madam. Well, you've won me over. Let's have a look here and see what there is to see about this. I think this might be a depiction of Hecate, a Greek goddess. Look. The moon, a card of flux, shadows, magic and feminine mysteries. The moon shows us the dark roads of the subconscious, the half-dreamed and sometimes the almost nightmarish at night. By only the light of the moon, the familiar becomes strange. By the light of the moon, we might catch enough light to be guided through the darkness. Secret meetings are brought together and the beings of the night emerge. It is here at the crossroads that we might participate in the secret rites of Hecate. Now, Hecate, and I'm looking at this woman here, she was the Greek goddess of magic, witchcraft, goddess of the night and of the moon and she has a strong association with Crossroads. Now, we don't know much about Hecate's mystery cult because it was shrouded in secrecy for obvious reasons, but we are given images of the or brief insights that it was attended by people bearing flaming torches and initiates into her mysteries were believed to be protected from terrors 
and from storms. Now there is for me here a very strong association with Pisces and of the subconscious when we deal with the moon. The moon is full of mystery and wonderment. Its waxing and waning cycles reflect death and rebirth, fertility, intense dreams, deep sleep, and heightened psychic abilities. Certainly unexpected situations are on the horizon, but there is also a great transformation that's going. But this is a theme that's happening with you this month. Now, the moon cycles represent the cycles of your spiritual and physical paths in the world of matter. And the moon stirs ancient, mysterious feelings inside. The moon's number is 18, the number of challenge, tests, initiation, intuition, inner strength, and completion. This energy intensifies any situation, and it can take a situation to unexpected places. The moon is the threshold or gateway to a new and unknown reality. It is yet another initiation, and its path can be referred to as the dark night of the soul which those in the Christian tradition may remember as a, a, um, a the mystic St. John of the Cross wrote a mystical Christian work called The Dark Night of the Soul, which I'm sure I read many years ago. But the moon's mysterious illusory scenery is important. It is surrealistic. The scenery around you has a different shadowy cast to it at the moment. It takes you out of the ordinary. Now don't get lost in its illusions. You have to use your senses and pay attention. You have to trust your intuition and your, your instincts. Now when the moon calls you to enter the darkness, feelings and emotions can come out of nowhere. So trust your inner divine light. The moon reminds you to go forward without worrying about all the what ifs. Trust your authentic self and fight the monsters. Light is always brighter than darkness. And the moon's guiding light says, follow me. Use your inner strength and focus. Trust your intuition and instincts and you will wake up on the other side of the threshold, liberated. I think that this energy here is going to inspire you on your way to new ideas and paths. Now, though, though it doesn't reveal the total situation to you, it teaches you to tap into your intuition and trust. It opens information and inherent memories through dreams or meditation, maybe even visions. It reflects where you are on your cycle of life and how you feel about it. It reminds you that the cycles in life and your spiritual path are always beginning, ending and rebirthing just like the moon. The moon reminds you that you will pass through the threshold many times and on many levels. And each time you do, you heal yourself and your awareness becomes more expanded and your wisdom becomes deeper. The moon reflects the sun. You reflect the divine. Now, speaking of the divine, I think the divine is calling upon you to be a pipe, to bring down, to act as a conduit, to bring down your, your wisdom and your potential. Let's have a look at this car of the star. And it will, no doubt, because these things are all connected, have something to say. Isn't this an interesting picture? What would that be? Look, the um, devotion to the biblical figure in the Christian tradition of Mary, the mother of Christ, it's actually very widespread and old, and it goes back to about the, the 300s in the, um, the early part of the last millennium, well, a couple of millenniums ago now. She is praised by many names, and has manifested to her devotees across the world in many forms. Now, the particular form of Mother Mary 
represented here is that of the Star of the Sea, also known as Stella Maris in Latin. Now, as Stella Maris, Mary is a sign of hope and guidance for those lost in the darkness. She provides mercy to those on the metaphorical seas of life's troubles and brings them safely to shore. Now, the important thing to remember is that what she does is that she heals and soothes, offering renewal and peace. In a real sense, this energy here represents the calm that you feel after the storm. It offers peace, hope and rest. Your life is cycling all the time, as we saw with the moon. Your, your mind, body and emotions are always fluctuating and stretching, taking you to dark corners and then to the doorway of light. This is the guiding light, the one that seeks out during tough, dark times or tough times. And I think you are now looking for a deeper meaning in life. You are searching for your truth. You are looking for peace of mind. Uh, mind. Now, the number here of this arcana is 17, and that is the number of dreaming, promise, perception, and imagination. It brings spiritual evolution by finding your true self, the treasure within your heart. Now, this energy here offers you guidance, wholeness, inspiration, and focus on your path towards understanding your destiny in the universal plan. It reminds you that the universe provides you with a continuous light that shines on your individual path as you travel through life's experiences. When you feel lost, experience a lack of hope, or find yourself avoiding situation, uh, avoiding situations, then, then what what this does is it shines brightly on your true inner self. It guides you to trust your inner voice, your intuition to open up and receive the light. And by receiving the universal light, you connect to a deeper understanding, which leads to healing, self-esteem, self-love and self-trust which then opens you up to receive cosmic inspiration from the divine. The star brings you hope and healing. Now, during this month, the star is going to shine with focus, sparkle with imagination, and glisten with the understanding and penetrate your heart, mind, and spirit with love and life. The star heals you so that you can shine its light of inspiration, hope and confidence onto your world. It allows you to be a star in how you think, feel and love by understanding yourself and others. The star brings gifts of peace, faith, healing and a new refreshed outlook for the future. Fate Fame, imagination, and good fortune can shine on your path with this energy. Wish upon a star. Let your destiny unfold and let the magic begin. Remember, you are a star on this stage of life. And then I think it's finally, is it? Yeah, it's the King of Pentacles. Ah, well, the Hindu audience uh, and the Krishnas and the Jains will appreciate this because this looks like Vishnu, doesn't it? Now, as a king, he is associated with the element of fire, just as you are, fire. So the king of pentacles is the fiery part of earth, the giver of life. He is here the sustainer and Earth's active ability to create, feed, and support, and provide foundation are the gifts that he provides. Now, as fire of Earth, he may also manifest as Earth's explosive energy, the power of a volcanic eruption. You'd know all about that, I think, in your life, wouldn't you? And 
Yeah, well, I just lost my train of thought here. So. But as the sun warms uh, and grows the earth, the king here is the overseer of everything that earth represents in your life. Trade, health, wealth, family, stability, environment, and work. He protects your material concerns and is a providing, protective father figure. He has established a kingdom, set the wheels of productivity in motion, and now protects his investment. This King of Pentacles is a, uh, an example, an avatar almost, of abundance and prosperity in the physical realm. His success and wealth comes from his strong focus and commitment. When he sets his mind on a goal, it will happen. He is a strategic thinker and planner with high standards, as well as understanding the law of universal timing. The King of Pentacles is a stable, trustworthy, wise person whose heart is generous, supportive, and open. He is a strong and confident leader, following his, again the Hindus will understand this, Dharma, his sole purpose. He has created a flourishing kingdom surrounded by beauty that is full of opportunities. Now, when this king enters, he, he indicates here for you a time of success and prosperity. Now, possibly some sort of an inheritance, definitely an accomplishment, maybe a promotion, maybe a raise, or some financial gain is coming your way. He brings good health and physical recovery from illness. And he asks you to listen to your body. And do your diet or personal habits need attention? Your home and environment become important to you. You may have an impulse to create a beautiful, serene and welcoming home. Maybe wanting to remodel, to landscape or plant a garden. The king inspires you to be out in nature, breathe the air and take in all of its beauty. He reminds you that working with the earth's soil, it grounds any scattered energy and brings peace to the soul. And he can represent a doctor, an advisor or a counselor you can trust. He symbolizes talent and interest in Oh, in naturopathic, homeopathic and medical fields, you know, you might find interest in the medicinal remedies of plants and herbs or herbs if you're outside the United States. Anyway, I think time has defeated us. So that's a great set of cards for you. Well done. Well, I think uh, I look, I really enjoyed doing that reading for you. Honestly, I did. I thought the artwork was pretty interesting, didn't you? I thought so. I, I work very... This deck, uh, for some reason, really seems to speak to me. And I hope that you enjoyed the reading as much as I enjoyed providing it to you. You're a very special person and I love doing readings for you. Now, there's one thing I want you to remember until I see you next time, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. So until then, it's bye for now.